All right, all right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Alex here and uh, Emilio. Welcome to the desert, my friend. Thank you very much. All right. So Emilio is my friend for a while and um, I convinced him to have a podcast with me, to have a podcast together, to um, have a little chat about life, about things, about things, about uh, how it is going in Etihad, in his flying career, not only his background and so on and so forth. Emilio, just introduce yourself in a few words, where you're from, what's your age, all of that stuff. So hello, everybody. Hello, Alex. Uh, so, as he said, my name is Emilia, I'm 27 years old, just turned 27 actually, and um, I'm originally from Uruguay, for whoever doesn't know it, it's in South America, between Brazil and Argentina, and um, I lived in Spain also 13 years, and in London for one, and now of course I'm in Abu Dhabi for one year and a half. Nice man, you know it's very weird because I actually had... Uh, the previous two people in my podcast, they both lived in Spain. So I don't know what's happening, but something is up with Spain. I just have people around from Spain, my brother. It's good to have you on, man. Um, tell me for how long you've been in the company now in Etihad Airways. I've been in the company for um, one year, six months and uh, uh, three hours and 47 minutes. <laughs> Approximately. Approximately. <laughs> Approximately. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> one year and a half, one year and a half. All right. Um, how do you find it so far, man, the life in the sandpit? I'm actually quite happy. Um, of course, we all have expectations about the things we're going to do in the future. Whenever we have a plan or whenever we're about to do something, we always have expectations that we build based on things we watch, things we hear, things we read. In my case, for example, as I told you once a couple of times, yeah. I had some expect expectations based on your videos, for example, that helped me a lot before I joined. And it's so weird that now we're having a podcast together. <laughs> I know, man, I know. It's, it's very weird because we're actually friends. We uh, participate, both of us, in the company promotion events, you know, Formula One and uh, Mission Impossible and all those uh, promotional events. And, uh, you know, we, we know each other for a while. I don't know yeah. how, how long we know each other, maybe one year. Uh, so I don't know if you remember, but yeah. my second operational flight was with you. You might not remember because in your career you had so many flights. I know, yeah. Okay, you've true. been flying for a while. But for me, it's easy to remember the first flight. I'm sure you remember your first flight. Yeah, I do. Okay, Absolutely. so uh, my second operational flight was with you. Yeah. I know by that time you knew it was my second operational. Now you don't remember. It's totally okay. But yeah, we had that ancient flight after COVID, like during COVID times, whatever. And it was really cool. So I basically oh, no, know you. Of course, I remember. We were uh, then in the layover together and, you know, having uh, drinks, having food together, exactly. all that stuff. Of course, I remember. Of course, I remember. Sometimes my memory is lacking, especially because I meet so many people on a daily basis and I fly with so many people on a daily <laughs> basis. And uh, some sometimes it's hard to remember certain moments until something is triggered in my yeah, mind. You exactly. know what I mean? So, yeah, of course, I remember. We had fun, man. Yeah? We had fun this day. Yeah, it was many hours. And actually, I remember... Was it like 50 hours it or something? It was 58 hours. 58 hours, yeah. And what I remember as well, that that was one of your last flights as FA, like in economy class. Ah, then because I Because you had already, you had already got the, the upgrade to to business class. Nice, man. So, yeah, we got to work together in economy. So, yeah, we've known each other for a while, basically from the beginning. Bro, you are next in line for business class upgrade. That's for sure. And you should be. I don't know. God knows. I don't know. Do I deserve it? Uh, no, listen, you've been here one year and a half. So, uh, for sure, it's, it's coming soon for you, at least by the staff number. That's for sure. But uh, anyway, anyway, how do you find Abu Dhabi so far? One year and a half, man. Actually, I'm quite happy here. As I told you, we all build expectations. And in most of the aspects, it's better than I would have expected. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there are a lot of things to do here. Um, like the, inter the kind of entertainment I like, it's all here. Like at the Ferrari world, you know, there's a karting thing here. So there are lots of things here that I love to do that I can do it 50 minutes away from my place. So I cannot complain. I cannot complain. There's good uh, internet as well. <laughs> I don't need much more than that. Absolutely. You know, we're quite basic, that's for sure. And speaking of uh, karting, me and Emilio we went karting once. Yes. And this guy, ladies and gents, he's a beast when it comes to <laughs> karting. Um, he's really fast. He's really strong in the curves. 
<laughs> I don't know what this, I don't know what that means. But well, I used to be better when I was lighter, but then I gained weight, and now my times uh, got quite worse. Yeah, to be honest, uh, when it comes to karting and race racing sports, it's very weird because your weight, how much you weigh as a person, has so much influence on the outcome of the race. Definitely, because you know every every gram extra is maybe some time off of that uh, of that lap so even uh, lewis hamilton when it comes to formula one he has to be as tiny as possible as skinny as possible and have, has a strong core you know to be able to drive properly and people think uh, if you have uh, you know this kind of sport like a racing sport uh, people think it's easy and you just sit in that car and race but it's actually much more um, challenging than that your timing was not bad for being the first time racing in that track honestly yeah. it was quite fine but I would like to go again and see if you had improved you. Because um, first time, it's always nice to learn the track and the curves and everything. But then, of course, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And of course, I have been so many times there. That's why it was impossible for him uh, you're to a, me. You're a legend, man. I, I have no words. But you the thing legend, is, man. the thing is with this kind of situation, it's the same as gym, right? It's all about the practice. You have to practice, 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 and then you become better. And it's the same with a lot of endeavors in life. Practice makes it perfect. Okay, so you're from Uruguay. Now, we don't have many uh, colleagues from Uruguay in our company. And actually, I don't know many people from Uruguay in Abu Dhabi or in the UAE, uh, as, as far as, as I know. Um, how, wh how would you describe your country? So it's a small country, yeah. to, a small country to be where it's situated, like between South huge, America, right? Yes, yeah. it's sit, like right between huge countries as Argentina and Brazil. Yeah. So that's why I say it's a small country, but it's, for example, bigger than Switzerland or many other countries in Europe. But uh, yeah, I would consider it a small country, um, not very populated. We're only three million people there. Only three million people. Okay. okay. Yes, only three million people, and um, which is the population of Dubai, actually. Really? Yeah. Ah, I maybe Dubai even even more, but something like that. Three, around three million, maybe three and a half. Very interesting. And um, the, the most curious thing about it is that from those three million, one third, so one million, is uh, situated in the in the capital, at the very south, which is the smallest part of Uruguay. So basically, when you go to the capital, it's super crowded, especially at peak times. Mm -hmm. um, super super crowded. But then if you go from south to north you see nothing but just mm, huge fields, cows, and maybe oh. a house every many, many kilometers. Okay. So we have uh, towns, of course, we have uh, cities, you know, but uh, if you go from south to north, you don't see anything at all. Okay. Because basically there's people there that owns huge pieces of land mm -hmm. and they have cows and they are like basically they produce meat, right, that they export to even Europe or many other parts in the world. But um, that's why the, the country is quite empty, let's say. Okay, um, fair enough. You have a football team, though, as far as I know, and the football team is not bad. Is that Actually, true? I would say we have good football players, Yeah. but the national team itself is not really good. I really don't know what's the reason, but um, most of the players, um, the, the good players there from Uruguay, they got nice contracts in Europe, for example, which ah. is where all the good players go to play. Got it. But um, the national team itself is not really, really good lately. Of course, we got two World Cups in the past. Uh, in the very first World oh, Cup, two actually. two World Cups. Yes. You got two World Cups in football. That's actually a pretty good, uh, you know, it's a pretty good stat, I would say. Yes, for such a small country, it is. Mm -hmm. But, of course, uh, we have to... To understand that it was one of them was the very first World Cup in the world. Yeah. So football was much different from what it is now, and the second one was many years after, but not in the, um, not lately. So we haven't been close to a final since uh, South Africa 2010, in which we got to semi-finals, but then uh, we couldn't make it to to a final. Ah, that's okay, man. Um, far away, though. Very far away from, from everything. South America, South basically. America. That's, um, and then you, you came in, uh, in Europe, in Spain, with your parents when you were young? Yeah, exactly. When I was okay. 13 years old, uh, more or less 14 years ago, something like that, yeah. we moved to Spain, which is basically what most of the families uh, try to do when, when, when they are there. 
So yeah, we moved to Spain when I was 13 years old, and I haven't been back to Uruguay for the last 13 years. Ah, sorry to hear, man. That's a that's a long that's a long time actually. Yeah, it's a long time, but honestly, I I found living in Spain really really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really happy that we managed to move there. So even though I would love to visit Uruguay again, it would just uh, be a visit. I I don't think I would end up living there. Yeah, I understand. So basically nowadays the home is Spain anyway. Yes, I, I would come home Spain, definitely. Got it. Got it. It's it's a good country. The weather is amazing. Sometimes it's very hot as well, in, especially in the summer. But uh, yeah, maybe not as hot as Abu Dhabi. Definitely, definitely not. Yeah. Especially the north where I used to live in Asturias is at the very north and it's in general quite cloudy and rainy. Okay. It's very well known for that, at least in Spain. So... Um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, the nature there is incredible, and I would I will only I always suggest everyone to to go to Spain, especially to the north, because everyone knows the south. Everyone knows uh, Malaga, Murcia. Everyone knows Canary Islands. Everyone knows Ibiza. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I would suggest everyone to go to Asturias, the north, in summer because in winter it's really cold and rainy. But in summer it's beautiful. There are many things to do there. Um, people is uh, super cheerful there in summer. You have a lot of parties in every village every day, so it's a fun place. That sounds good, man. That sounds good. I wanted to ask you because probably many of our viewers want to know: Have you been to uh, Have you been to college? No, I haven't been to college. Okay. After when I finished high school, um, I was working at the same time in the very last year of high school. Okay. And then I started to study for personal trainer. So I'm actually a certified personal trainer. And then after that, I work in many, many places in uh, in Spain. I worked in many places, worked in a lot of clothing brands, bars, etc., restaurants, did a lot of things. And so then, bars, clubs and customer service kind of jobs, right? So absolutely. how did you go from that to being a cabin crew? I always wanted to be cabin crew since I was maybe 14, 15 years old. Okay. And because since I was a child, my mom always uh, told me about how much you would have liked to do it. So maybe that got in my head. That's so nice, actually. That's amazing. So that yeah. was the reason. Inspiration from your mother. I think so. Uh, she never got the chance to do it. So it kind of mm-hmm. got stuck in my head. So the first opportunity I had, uh, which was when I was 21 years old, um, I found um, an assessment day for like really close to my house for Ryanair. And I went for it. I got it. Uh, I had a training in Frankfurt Hahn in Germany for one month and a half. And then uh, they, got, they uh, gave me my base, my base, which was uh, London uh, Stansted, okay, where, London I spent, Stansted yeah. mm-hmm. where I spent one year. And um, I had to finish working there because of COVID. When COVID started, it got really bad in London at some point. Um, our rosters were empty. We had no flights. The um, house I was living in, uh, the contract was finishing. Uh, so I, I can relate to that, bro, because here it was the same uh, deal. We had lockdowns. So we had, you know, it, the situation was quite tense. We didn't have flights. Uh, people were complaining. They have loans. They don't. They cannot pay the loans because yeah. you know we don't have income. So it was quite a tense situation. I guess it was the same in your case as yes, well. Yes, but my decision was really fast. As mm-hmm. soon as I saw next roster was empty, first thing I said was like I had to leave. So basically, I found, um, and the funny part was that when I wanted, I resigned and I wanted to leave, but there were no more flights to Spain, actually. Oh. So basically, because I didn't check before, I didn't check before resigning. So I resigned and then I checked for flights. The only flight available was once a day from London Heathrow to Madrid. But the problem was that the maximum um, whole uh, luggage you could have was up to 40 50 kilograms and i had at least 80 because of course i was living there for a yeah, while yeah so i didn't want to live without my stuff and i didn't want to i didn't know what to do so what i did is i left to um, i left to portugal and then from portugal i got a taxi for 500 euro oh, to God. to my to my hometown in asturias and then I stayed there for two years again. In I went back home for two years. For how long have you worked in Ryanair? In I worked all for all? only one year, exactly okay. one year, actually. Exactly one year. Yes. Wow. And then COVID came and hit. Yeah, that's 
that actually ruins the plans for so many people in so many regards yeah i mean obviously we all care about the health and everything else but also it hit financially speaking you know people lost their jobs uh, there was no work to do uh, lockdowns you know the lack of kind of a freedom kind of thing you know and uh, yeah definitely europe felt it we felt it and i hope that kind of stuff doesn't come again but uh, okay and then you were home what happened afterwards Actually, let me add that even though I know it was really hard for everyone yeah, and a lot of people lost literally everything, lots of business had to close, people who had businesses uh, for years, they had to close. But anyway, somehow, I always say we have to try to find the positive things, the positive part in everything that happens. And even though it hit me as it hit a lot of people, it was somehow a great opportunity because... Now I'm coming to Renetti Hat in like where I feel so much better. So somehow, even though by that time uh, I was not really happy because of what happened because of COVID, I'm happy that the outcome was coming here. So mm -hmm. I went two years home uh, where I worked again in restaurants, pubs, etc. And at the same time, I was studying for uh, pipe welding which basically is welding, but specialized in pipes. Mm -hmm. um, it's just another profession. That's a profession, man. That's and, a profession. Uh, Nowadays, I think they're highly paid, to be honest. It's uh, it's well paid, yes. Pipe welding was uh, was really nice, actually, even though I never got to, to work doing it. I'm yep. still uh, happy that I that I, I got to, to study it because it could be useful in the future. You never mm -hmm. know. And, and yeah, uh, because once I finished that, I found all these uh, assessment days for uh, airlines like Etihad. Like back then, we just started to hire again, right? That yes, was exactly. The as okay. soon as I finished this pipe welding course, um, Etihad, Qatar, Emirates, etc., they started to hire again. And um, I was mainly interested in Etihad, even mm -hmm. though at the beginning I was thinking in, in the three of them. Yeah. So that's how it went and that's how I got here. I'm happy to hear that, man. Was the assessment uh, open day or assessment day? Was it uh, in person or online? It was not an open. It was not an open day. Yeah. It was uh, by invitation. By invitation. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I submitted my uh, CV, etc. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, there was an invitation for uh, Barcelona, which uh, is where I did the assessment day. How many people were there? We were around 140, I'd say. Wow, that's quite a lot that's for assessment. Lot. Yeah. Yeah, and then actually I met some of my closest friends here. Mm -hmm. So my flatmate, the one who is my flatmate, and my closest friend here, and one from other of my closest friends, I met them both of them there. That's amazing. So, yeah, it was uh, it was nice from the from the beginning. From the beginning, everything was super nice. Uh, happy to hear that, man. Happy to hear that. So Etihad, one year and a half now. Hopefully, you'll get business class soon. Uh, I really awesome. hope that. Uh, do you like flying? What's your favorite aircraft so far? Yeah, honestly, I like flying. I liked it when I did it before. And of course, I like it here. Uh, my favorite aircraft is, I think it's um, everyone's opinion, uh, it's the 787-9. I yeah. love that aircraft. Yeah, likewise, I think for, it's the standard. For cabin crew, I don't know for passengers, but for cabin crew, it's really, really nice. Yeah. So... Um, there's no for me there's nothing to discuss about it are you 350 as well airbus a350 i'm trained for 350 you as are well. trained for 350 okay uh how do you find that is it a bit tougher is the galley a bit smaller that's Honestly, what i heard at least yeah space management is a bit harder there mm -hmm. but even though at the beginning i was not super happy with it now i find it quite easy since i i know how to to deal with it mm -hmm. So for me, it's not a struggle anymore whenever I have a flight there, which is most of my flights in the aircraft. I don't struggle anymore. So nothing to nothing to complain about. Uh, this is a question that I asked uh, before on my podcast. Do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? It depends on the situation. Situational. It depends on, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. definitely, definitely. Because I can come to a place in which I'm the most, like, very shy and then sometimes I could be super extrovert regardless of not knowing the, the people around. So I really don't know what it depends on, but definitely situational. Okay. 
fair enough i i would say i'm the same although leaning more towards the introvert side maybe especially since we both of us were gaming we are gamers and that's one thing that i didn't really promote on my youtube channel but it's true uh what are you gaming sir what is your favorite games to play what are you saying i'm not a gamer you're not a gamer i've never played video games <laughs> sorry about that man no, no, it's, okay, it's okay it's okay i'm gonna talk about it yeah yeah i've been playing video games since i was uh since i was a kid like everybody but the difference is that i kept playing uh, okay yeah, even I though think it's the same here, yeah, yeah it never it never stopped and actually even though people always say no when you grow up you stop playing video games yeah but no that's not true for a lot of people and even nowadays they still love to play video games is one of my one of my hobbies and i think it will never stop if i'm almost 30 and i didn't stop playing it will never stop so oh, legendary man i think it's a way to release uh, pressure you know some people they just watch tv some other people they just game yeah, in the exactly. free time some other people they read books sometimes i'm just coming home from a flight and i may not sleep yet maybe it's 8 p.m i just want to game a little bit and then i'll put myself to sleep you know it's just a way to release pressure uh, there's also, you know, it's it's like a team kind of situation and most of our games, right? Multiplayer. Yeah. So uh, we are shooting ducks, ladies yeah. and gents. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the thing is that even though sometimes you, most of the times you want to play because you love it and because you want to relax after a tough day. Yeah. Sometimes you end up really mad and you just want to stop playing because it's not helping at all. <laughs> right. Uh, Especially sometimes. with multiplayer games. Yeah, sometimes at least once in your life you broke something because of uh, gaming rage i haven't personally but i'm happy to hear that i you have are never doing. done it <laughs> it never happened to me i don't know i, don't I am know. just sure it happens to you for sure <laughs> well cheers for that but anyway what do you think about this new setup so ladies and gents for those of you that are new i just um managed a bit of a new space here the reason for that and i'll be very transparent with our viewers is that before the gentleman just arrived to my home i broke my living room table so now my podcast is having a different kind of setup but anyway i have to say the setup is really nice and really cozy here okay so yeah honestly it looks nice you have a uh, your room has a really nice setup i appreciate your gaming that, setup is also super nice i appreciate that so, sir Thank you. Uh, you know, it's I like to make my place feel like home and make it the way I want it, you know. Um, if I can do that and if I have the possibility to do it, why not? It's our space, our living space, our living premises. So that's Absolutely. as easy as that. One other hobby that I know you have is surfing. Tell me about that. Okay, so I started surfing. I really don't know why because as a child, I never had any interest in surfing and then someday suddenly when I was around 18 I'd say something like that one of my friends told me oh I started surfing you want to try with me and I was like no I'm not interested in that I don't like it and he told me okay let's rent some surfboards and try and we were actually by the beach and there are lots of um, surf houses there where I used to live so I was like okay why not we're free we have we have the time you know so let's do it so we rented we rented surfboards we went there to a uh, to small spot, you know, like small yeah. waves, because at the beginning you cannot go to the to the to the big waves, right? Of course, you have to learn. And I tried it with foam boards first, of course, like the big ones, and it felt amazing. And it became Damn. since then the my favorite sport for real. So Damn. after that, I rented board three or four times, and then I realized it was a waste of money, and I was doing it all the time. So what I did is I went to a place, I bought my first surfboard, and since then, I was surfing every day. It's insane, but wow! I was not. I was living like let's say ten minutes drive from the beach, and this uh, that sounds like an amazing location back in Spain, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's nice because even though. Um, the surface spots doesn't don't work like the whole year. Some uh, surface spots only work ten days a year. Some others work a hundred days a year. But this one would work most of the year. It was a really long uh, shore, and you had a lot of different uh, surface spots there. That's amazing. So I would leave work around five six p.m. and I would go literally every day to surf. Uh, even though I'm not professional at all and I don't consider myself a good surfer. I love it and 
yeah, I'm always trying to find a way to go to different locations to surf. Yeah, I'm sure you're being humble, man. It sounds uh, like quite a few days of surfing, quite a few, uh, quite a big period of time of surfing. I'm sure you're much better than you think. Uh, honestly, but, uh, I, I think I'm being quite realistic because uh, surfing takes a really long time to master the technique. Okay. Because in the end, um, you have a really short time to to improve your skills because it's really hard to catch a wave at the beginning. Mm. It's really hard to improve your technique because when you finally manage to catch a wave at the beginning, you have a really short time to practice until that wave ends or until you fall, until you have a wipeout. So uh, it takes here to, to be good at it. That's why I always admire, um, for example, I went once to surf to, uh, to Sri Lanka and I admire always local surfers because they start to surf when they are really, really um, young. Mm -hmm. So you can tell that this that's in, in their blood, you know, and somehow ah. I wish that was my situation. You know, I wish I had started surfing when I was uh, when I was a kid. But well, somehow I discovered it quite late and I'm still really happy that I, I can do that. I understand. So the younger you start, obviously, like in a lot of other sports, then the the better you can become as a I don't know a teenager or an adult. So definitely. And the the, the learning curve is quite uh, steep, right? Yeah, because of it's that. really hard. Okay, interesting. Um, well, one other thing that we have in common, that's for sure, is going to the gym. Absolutely. How do you find the time to manage? going to the gym and you know doing your proper fitness and flying at the same time how do you manage that because many of our viewers they want to actually know that so well honestly um, a lot of times of course i have to go to the gym in layovers yeah um if the hotel if the gym in the hotel is not super good like if it doesn't have the minimum equipment i would need for a workout i even might go to an outside gym i would find some gym in the city and of course, I try to go on my days off as much as I can. I was about to laugh. No, it's okay. You can laugh. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I can continue. All right. Of course, always listening to my body as well. Uh, yeah. Resting when I really need to rest. Uh, eating properly for sure, because that's a must. If you're not eating properly, it's not really worth it to 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 go to the gym and, and work out for hypertrophy or strength workout, etc. But I somehow find a way. Of course, it's really hard to to have a routine uh, flying is really hard but yeah. it's achievable definitely it's achievable no, I, I totally agree you know i'm flying for quite a while and uh, it's been ups and downs when it comes to fitness and uh, something that i really try to do is just incorporate a small workout here and there even if i'm tired even if i'm jet lagged even if i'm in the layover and i'm not in the mood i just go to the gym i hop on the treadmill maybe do some dumbbells you know just do something whatever i can and then if i'm well rested like let's say i have a 10 hours um, proper night sleep the next day i will definitely destroy the gym because i have an energy i have the mood i'm prepared for war so so would you say since you joined, yeah. have you improved in the gym? Uh, I stagnated. So I would say since I joined, I, I say maybe I was the same size muscle-wise and maybe I was a bit more shredded. So I, I wouldn't say it's just ups and downs. It's just ups and downs Definitely. and stagnation, I would say. But what I'm saying about stagnation is that means is basically also maintenance. So you maintain yourself. You maintain yourself. So I cannot say I improved myself in the last, I don't know, five, six years, but I can say I maintain myself. I don't know if that's fair enough. Okay, that's a good goal anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I was at a good level. I was at the level of, let's say, muscle maturity and so on and so forth that I feel like it's okay. And I can just, you know, try to keep that and maintain that and, and just, you know, be functional and look good and uh, that's it you know be healthy that's the goals right yeah definitely. after all yeah. yeah how about you how are you now uh, i think i i made a big improvement since i joined especially okay. because before i joined was covid times most of the gyms were closed yeah. so before joining i couldn't go much to the gym mm -hmm. and of course they had this thing of uh, they had a certain amount of people allowed in the gym so yeah. most of the times i couldn't even go so yeah. i gained some weight since i joined like muscle wise of course and my strength of course improved as well so i'm really happy of course i had ups and downs 
Uh, I got my injuries. As, uh, uh, I, I know. Has. Listen, uh, guys, I was running with this guy right we were on the Mazdar track. We're running together and we decided to do a sprint. That was how much? Maybe last year? Like maybe. It was, uh, yeah, one year ago. Last, let's say, yeah, yeah, one year ago, let's say. And uh, we decided to do sprint, and this guy sprints like a maniac. This guy is a legend when it comes to sprinting. He's like the Usain Bolt. <laughs> but, but then he, uh, what, what did you do? What, there was a pulling in the hamstrings, both the of hamstrings, them at the same yeah. time. Yeah. I actually heard him. I, I heard the click in the hamstrings. Jesus. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. I remember, and you're like, should I, should I go for my flight? I was like, no, call sick, man. You cannot go for the flight. My like flight that. was uh, Toronto, uh, 14, 15 hours flight. You, you called sick for that, right? I went for the flight. Oh Jesus! Yeah, it I, was it was really hard. Honestly, it was super super hard because he helped me walk. <laughs> Actually, he wanted to call an ambulance because he saw the state in which I was. Yeah, I couldn't walk. Like he was carrying me basically for like two kilometers until we arrived to my place and the next day you went for that flight and i, I couldn't remember if he went for the flight or not that's why i'm a bit shocked the now. next morning remember. actually yeah i went for the flight it was really tough but of course i went because i felt like i could do it like next morning i woke up much better than i felt uh the the previous night because we actually did that sprint at night it was maybe know, 8 p.m yeah. something like that yeah something like that evening time yeah just uh, but uh, sunset time, okay yeah. i i th i thought i was fit to fly fit to, fit to operate and i made it um but yeah i think i felt that pain for at least three weeks maybe I have no words. Man, the thing is, you should manage yourself properly. You shouldn't go through that pain. You need some time off, obviously. Did you take some time off afterwards or you just went for the flights and that's it? Um, no, after the flight, I actually, I went to the gym in the layover. You see, this is a proper human specimen, <laughs> ladies and gents. This is... This is ambition and motivation. But obviously, um, will, the message I try to convey is here is if you don't feel fit for the flight, you shouldn't go for the flight. Many times I called sick if I didn't feel well. Um, that means if you have a duty tomorrow and you're not fit, you can call sick. You can tell them, hey, you know, this is the situation. Actually, I you have be. to. You have yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But obviously, if you feel you can and you can pull through, then absolutely, by all means, um, uh, go ahead. Yeah, sometimes it's a fine line between you just don't feel 100% but you are fit to operate so that was my case of course i was not 100% i was not feeling as good as i would like to but i was fit to operate i, I was fit to operate okay yeah fair enough now here comes the time in which i have to ask you to do together for the viewers a double bicep my friend damn boy yeah man we have to <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's go <laughs> let's go a like double no because double, the, the yeah, other I, arm, don't, I don't know if it re, yeah uh, it'll be actually angled. you know what would be super nice what if would be super nice you put in this video yeah the by the double biceps photo we have from my second operation of flight in Incheon we took pictures doing I remember biceps. that one I remember that so one. you could attach that picture and put it in the video as a if I still find it but up, up until it. then okay we do uh, just the uh, one arm bicep okay all right three two one. I cannot see it because of the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Man, All like right, huge. not bad, not bad. All right, ladies and gents, this was our bicep showcase yeah, here buddy. on the channel. Lightweight, so this is lightweight just... Lightweight baby. Yeah, lightweight <laughs> baby, correct. It's just a couple of gym guys here uh, just enjoying themselves on this podcast. So I hope you appreciate that. Don't forget to leave a like for that. And you subscribe, know. subscribe button there. Yeah under yeah in the comment section <laughs> down below that's correct my friend all right man we've done that we've done that now uh, one question i would like to ask you what is your favorite destination and this is a very cliche question because everybody asks us cabin crew this question but anyway go ahead try to see if you can answer that my favorite destination i'd yeah. say it's bangkok no way definitely all right and I what happens in Bangkok? <laughs> 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 that was amazing, man. What is your favorite destination? Bangkok. All right. <laughs> I love that. Oh my yeah, God, man. man. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me why. <laughs> that was amazing, man. That was amazing. Uh, 
Okay. But okay, why? Uh, it's like being in GTA online, basically, because <laughs> what? It's such a random place. If someone has ever played GTA online, you know you can do literally whatever you want. So you can find the streets and when you can go for a massage and suddenly you can go for a drink and you can go for a uh, party tattoo, and tattoo or party yeah, yeah, or yeah. a gym or whatever. You find literally everything everywhere. So it's a nice place to have fun. The weather is amazing. Absolutely so, true. And yeah. the vibe, the people is super cool. I think that's the most of it, actually. The, the vibe the people gives you. Uh, the locals are amazing, really cheerful always. And um, I think it's a really fun place. And, and I would definitely live there. Nice, man. Okay, fair enough. So Thailand, Thailand it is. Uh, now, what would be your favorite food? My favorite food, actually... Don't say gym food, because... Okay. Yeah, we just I had... Can I say gym chicken food. with rice? Chicken no? with rice, okay. yeah. No, no, no uh, chicken and rice. Yeah. Before this podcast, Alex invited me to his uh, classic chicken with rice. We just had some chicken and rice before this podcast. I'm just letting everybody know this is the truth, you know? Yeah, gym food. Classic, yeah. classic. Yeah. No complaints, it was really good. Even though it, the, the beauty of the chicken and rice is in its simplicity. Correct. It was super good. Uh, okay, so back to favorite food. Yeah. Um... It's gonna be weird because I haven't tried this or known about this until this year. But my very, very favorite food is mango sticky rice. No way, man. So, of course, it relates to what's your favorite destination as well. Probably. Because it comes from Thailand. Yes, and uh, it's a bit, um, a bit curious how it happened because... Every time I was having a layover in Bangkok, I was seeing everyone eating mango steak rice. I was seeing everyone taking it home. And I was always wondering, what is nice about this? It's yeah. mango with rice and it yeah. says sticky, which doesn't sound really nice, honestly. Yeah, right. So I was always wondering, what is it so nice? What, what is it so nice about it, right? So once I was in Phuket with my girlfriend and she told me, why don't you try mango sticky rice? And I was like, there's no way I'm going to try that. That doesn't sound good at all. And she uh, insisted many times. And she insisted many for you times, to have that mango many sticky times. rice. Okay. And after many times uh, that she insisted, I was like, okay, I'm going to try it. I tried it. And oh my God. In that moment, I discovered what is mango sticky rice. It became my very favorite food. And since then, I've been eating it Every week, every time I go to Bangkok, I eat like maybe five mango sticky rice the same day. That's a lot of calories, my friend. I don't care. It tastes amazing. And Damn. for as long as I'm alive, I want to enjoy that flavor because I feel like I've been missing out for so many years because I'm, I'm 27. So it's 27 years that I didn't try mango sticky rice. So now that I know about it and how good it is, I want to enjoy it for the rest of my life. And you know, that's quite shocking. The way you put this has... has makes sense you know like there has been 27 years you haven't enjoyed it so you have to catch up with it Definitely. i never considered something like that uh, well you know discovering yeah, i can't thing. help finding this uh <laughs> <laughs> this depth in in certain topics uh, yeah that's yeah. that's very deep man that's very deep so mango sticky rice i actually enjoy that so much as well it's one of my favorite desserts for sure i don't know if it's a dessert even i, I don't know how would you classify I it i think i think it's a dessert but i eat it I as eat a, it as, as an meal. appetizer, I eat it as a main course, and I okay. eat it as a dessert, and sometimes I even eat it as a drink. Oh, God. Yeah, if you ask me, what would you like to drink? Mango sticky rice. Bro. That's brutal. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A destination that you'd like to see that you haven't seen yet? Lisbon. Lisbon? Yeah. And we just have it now with Teddy Hut, right? Yes, and it's seasonal. Correct. And it's not easy to get, but I would love to go there. I've been to Portugal uh, once or twice, actually. And I would love to go again back to Lisbon. I've never been to the south. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It would be great to go there. But if you ask me about the regular destinations we have during the whole year, I would say Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Man, you're killing me with the Bangkok, bro. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sorry, I just love Bangkok so much. <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Sorry, man. Uh, <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, you can cut this last part uh, about Bangkok. Uh, of course, <laughs> I'll, I'll cut this part, yeah. All right, so Lisbon. 
Yeah, beautiful place. You know what I always said is I will leave Europe to visit for last because we are from Europe and we can visit at any times. But um, yeah, you know, it's it's very weird. Many times I have like four or five days off. I don't really want to go anywhere. I just want to sit and game or maybe go to the gym or catch up on my sleep. Definitely. Do you have the same kind of feeling with that? Yes, as well, because even though I know many people who like to run away as soon as they have uh, many days off, but in my case, I really like to spend time at home. I really like to spend time with my computer, going to the gym, going to the pool. So I'd say everything I need and everything I want is surrounding me. So I don't have the need to live. But yeah, sometimes it's nice to, to go to out go and somewhere. explore. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I By the way, I really uh, want to thank you for this nice coffee you prepared for me. My pleasure. I don't know which one it is. I know you, you have um, a secret about it, but it's super nice. So thank you very much. Anytime, brother. It's my pleasure to have you over as um, a guest. You seem to me like quite a multi-talented individual. I'm not multi-talented, but I like to do many things. I think actually that's the reason why I'm not good at anything is because I like to do a lot of stuff. So I could never manage to master something. But for example, uh, I love to play guitar. I've been playing guitar for years. Yeah. I also played the bass. I even uh, played in bands as a bassist mainly when I was um, when I was younger. I played in many bands. My first band was when I was 15 years old. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's cool. That's awesome. Uh, I'll show you some stuff later. Actually, uh, the singer of my first band was my sister. She was a guitar player and singer. And then I played as bassist and in some other bands, pop, uh, metal, etc. It was so much fun. Yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. And maybe God knows, at some point I would love to have a band, even a tribute band, um, you know, like making covers of other bands or stuff like this. That's amazing, just for fun and for yeah, enjoyment. Exactly. That's amazing. And all of my hobbies is making tattoos, even though uh, I'm not super good at it because it also takes a lot of time to... Making tattoos. Okay, yes. tell me about that. Um, I started, I don't really know why. Um, basically... I'd say four years ago, more or less, I was uh, in Amazon. I think this happened to everybody at some point. You're in Amazon, you're scrolling down, and suddenly you have a suggestion there of something you have never seen before, which was, in my case, uh, tattoo machines and um, power source, etc. So I was like... Tattoo machines. <laughs> since I always loved to draw, I've, I've always been drawing since I was a kid. Even now, I still draw sometimes. I was like, why not? And I had just started getting my first tattoo. Yeah. So I bought the stuff and I started to practice on fake skin. But of course, I couldn't practice for too long because I straight away wanted to go for the real thing. So my first client was my sister. <laughs> I made a tattoo. You just tattooed your sister. Yeah, and she knew um, I was still learning how to use the machines and everything. So even though I was still learning how to use the machines, she told me, uh, I want a tattoo from you. She had already a few tattoos, but by professional artists, right? Yeah. So, yeah, my first tattoo was on my sister. Then I tattooed my own legs. I have uh, two or three tattoos made by myself, on myself. And but that, was that was that the only tattoos that sh you have like made by yourself or you had tattoos from other uh, uh, I have, tattoo artists? I have many tattoos. So most of them are made by professional tattoo of artists. Of course, of course. But uh, I have two that were made by myself, my own designs actually. And then I tattoo many friends. Um, never got any money for it. I just okay. did it because I was learning, of course, I was practicing. Of so course. I never wanted to make it a business because in the end, I'm not a professional tattoo artist. I Let's say I made it for fun. Of course, I learned the rules, how to avoid cross-contamination, etc. Of uh -huh. course, that's a very important thing because you don't want anyone uh, having infections, etc. So of that's course. very, very important. And I learned that first. And um, yeah, I had some friends that trusted me. I don't know how they do it, honestly. But they trusted me and I got uh, some tattoos on them. One of them was 18 years old. His mom uh, was really mad when she saw the tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, she, uh, she, I mean, I, I hope she considered it a proper tattoo, at least, even though she um, didn't agree with the idea. Well, well, the tattoos were not particularly the... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god, I'm going to hell. <clears throat> okay. We're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really feeling short now that I'm enjoying it so much, you know? Yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. feeling short, man. Yeah. We're here one hour talking. Uh, yeah, yeah it's exactly, man. So his mom was not really happy, but uh, it, anyway, we were laughing, honestly. Um, and it's a funny story because I made on the same day three tattoos on him. And then... Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, his mom arrived after the third tattoo. She saw those three. She was not super happy. And but she was quite surprised and shocked, and she was like, "Oh my God, my baby, what have you done?" She was not putting the blame on me; she was putting the blame on him. Of course, but I since mean, she knew she me from before and we were friends, she was still like, "Why would you do this to my kid?" <laughs> because she knew, uh, she thought that uh, me being such a serious person, right, I would always take him in the in a good path. But I made three touches on him. And um, basically, we had already made the stencil for the fourth tattoo. Uh, but she said that we got to stop there. But everything was ready for it. So he asked her to prepare some food for us um, before I leave. And by the time she was preparing the food... No way. We had to finish the fourth tattoo. No way. Which was quite hidden. And she found out after three, four months... She got a bit mad at me, but... Uh, well, I, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> you went stilt mode and did the fourth tattoo. The, <laughs> the fourth, exactly. That's the, that's the expression. It was in stealth mode, definitely. Stealth mode, yeah. Absolutely. Wow, a tattoo artist as well, a musician, a surfer and a gym freak, right? Let's say, yeah. Bravo, man, you're doing well and uh, good luck for the future. Any future plans, by the way, I don't know, in five years, ten years from now... Do you know exactly where you want to be or you're like taking it day by day? You know, when I was uh, much younger, yeah. I used to think how I would like my future to be. But with the time I started to realize that things never go as I want. So I really, I, it happens to most of people, of course. But um, in my case, I just realized that it is like this. Things never go as I expect or as I want. Mm -hmm. So what I started to do is working for the things I want and then adapting to what life gives me. So yes, it's true that I have some things in mind that I would like to come true. Yeah. Um, but I don't know the way it's going to be. So for now, what I can tell you is I'm going to work for the things I want and for the kind of future I want. But then I will, of course, adapt to, to what it actually is. That's an amazing answer, brother. And, uh, I can kind of relate to that. Very well put. Now, on Thank this uh, on this note, we'll kind of end the podcast here. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for being here, brother. Thanks and you. Uh, of course, as always, I'll see you in the gym. Of course. We do see each other in the gym sometimes. And uh, yeah, um, hope you get the business class upgrade soon for Etihad. That'll be so. pretty cool. It'll be great. We Definitely. can work together afterwards. Um, and uh, yeah, guys, please like, comment, subscribe, you know, all of that good stuff. Uh, please let me know if you are enjoying those types of podcasts. You know, sometimes we we go in other uh, subjects apart from aviation, but we're keeping it cool. We're keeping it um, within within the space. See you guys on the next one. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>